Hello folks. I'm really praying that this is not a video that has commercials in it. <laughs> As uh, I'm not entirely certain what to focus on the camera uh, at this time, but I am bringing forth another message from the Lord uh, pertaining to what I have been preaching for the last, oh... Mm, 20, 30, 40 minutes um, in messages back and forth to his body of believers here and there. So I thought about re-recording what I had left for the others um, that I had sent it to regarding this 30, 60, 100 fold that he's separating right now and I just asked him to help me with it again because it's been the topic of the day right now. And the topic of the day right now is that I am coming with my sword to divide the house of God. He said, I didn't, I didn't come to make peace with uh, everybody. I came with a sword, which is the truth, to divide the truth from not truth. And um, that's very much what he's doing. And um, I had said that he, he's absolutely had his fill of, of creation being filled with creation. He's absolutely had his fill of man being focused on man and what topics man wants to be focused on. And the last message I brought forth is, what is really being exalted in these messages? What is really being said in these messages? Because behind it is what entity is being exalted. And I kept telling him the thing that I keep seeing by far and large is that these topics, most of the time, sir, are based on what man wants to talk about, what man would like to receive, what man wants to be focused on, um, how it's going to uh, coddle man or, or encourage man or all these other things. And the spirit of the Lord is for that, period. Um, we are to carry our brother's burdens, etc., and so on. But what what he has shown me is we're, we're, we're not going to bail out a ship that's sinking. You can bail water and you can help them for hours and hours at a time trying to lift them up. But when they refuse to uplift me and my spirit and the truth within, you are bailing water from a ship that has a hole in the hull. You can try to plug that. You can spend your time trying to save somebody who has no intention to be in alignment with me. Right now they're angry. Right now they're bitter. Right now they're in envy or jealousy or competition or unbelief or doubt or pride or fear or whatever it is. So the point being is that he's got me on this topic right now where we're not coming with fluffy words. I've had my fill with fluffy words with these people, Janet, with my household, period. And if we're at a condition, he keeps telling me, if we're at a condition and state where we still need to be petted and encouraged to stand up in Christ right now, you are not ready for what's coming because he keeps saying, brace, brace, brace for impact. Brace, brace, brace for impact. He keeps shouting that in the spirit right now. He said, you have no idea what is coming in the spring. I don't even know what he's talking about, folks. Take that to the Lord. I do know scripture says kings go to war in the spring. I do know that. But he assures me that spring is going to shake things up in our realm. I don't know what that means. But he said that we cannot remain on milk. Milk is the superficial level of scripture. We cannot remain babies on the front lines. Babies don't make it on the front line. And he said, what you're going to find out is a many who think that they are in the 100 fold first fruits of mine who are 100% in alignment with me and are walking as one with me are not. And this is not in judgment of the 3060 or any other level that the Lord has. It is to tell you that you're going to want to be as mature as possible before what comes in is about to roll in. And the preparation, he said, the shakings and preparation and tribulatory processes that I put my people through are for good reason. If you heeded that and you came into alignment with me, you will be ready for the greater shaking that's coming in. If they haven't done this already, you will watch many fall away and you will watch many succumb to what the enemy is going to bring in. You're going to want to know your God and know your identity in Christ is what he is saying. And the 100 fruit people that are about to step in and up 
with Christ in this realm, they're going to be doing it because they stepped down and out and they served Christ. He said, I don't think we understand that any ministry you'll ever do in this earth unto my people will only be because, be because you came to me to sit and serve me. So any ministry there is, is, is unto me. If you are the only person on this earth, you ought to be ministering to me. So it's literally only going to be those who have been ministering unto Christ that are going to be able to be turned out to minister to the rest of the body. And they're not uplifting man right now into the exalted position. He has had his fill of watching man exalt whatever man wants to exalt that's not God. Do we want to talk about man and how man's going to walk out this mantle or this anointing or this attribute of God or what you're going to look like while you're doing it? What that's going to swim in for supernatural powers? Do we want to talk about AI and CERN and Antichrist? Do we want to talk about asteroids and different things and comets and whatever else are coming in that you can talk about? Or how about natural disasters and famines and climate control and whatever else man wants to be focused on that is focused in the carnal realm? Because none of that is on God holy. None of that is exalting the king and the kingdom. None of that is rolling out the John the Baptist, repent, repent, for God is here right now. Repent from your wicked ways and turn back to your creator. None of that is about focusing on the king or the kingdom. And he had something to say to Pete about that. You savor not the things of God or from the kingdom. You savor the things of man, which would be this earth, earthly realm. Pete wanted what Pete wanted because it served Pete for God not to go to the cross. It was not unto the kingdom purposes. It was not unto salvation. It was not unto what God Holy's purposes were. And he was exalting man in that instance. He was exalting creation. His focus was on man. And he said, I have far too much of that going on right now. You focused on your finances. That's about you. You're exalting you. You focused on your marriage. That's about you. It's focusing on you. You focused about your coworkers. You focused about what's going on in the earth realm right now. Any of it in any way, shape, or form, those are the things, the issues of life that so easily beset us. None of those things are focused on the king. And yet he'll tell me that if we were just focused on the king, if you set about in your day to just be focused on the king, I, I said earlier, I said, I don't have time to let the enemy win one day of a battle in my life. I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the luxury to do that because he's going to take me down if that happens. You do not have the luxury to come into agreement with the enemy in doubt, fear, unbelief, pride, envy, jealousy, exaltation of ourselves, self-righteousness, and anything else. You do not have the uh, privilege and time to do that anymore because what's coming in, if we're not battling those things and winning those things in our individual lives right now, you will not be able to help anybody else in what is coming because you yourself are going to drown. And he said, we're not coming with fluffy words. I have had my fill, Janet, of fluffy words out there, of people petting other people while they're down. It's okay. God's going to help you in this. And, 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 and this too shall pass and all of that. He said, why not? Why don't we get the fire of God under some spiritual butts for people to come out of their carnality, come out of weakness. You are strengthened in Christ. You are heirs to the king and to the throne. Step up and stand in your true identity because none of this other stuff's going to help them when, with what's coming, sweet child. I'm not coming with fluffy words anymore, folks. You want a fluffy word? They're out there. A dime a dozen. They're everywhere, which ought to tell you something. Those people that are out there right now, like the Terry Bennett's and the Jamie Walden's that are out there who are preaching the holy living God and serving him and growing up and getting mature and getting ready for what's coming in. That's what matters. And he's not talking about just what's coming into this earthly realm with earthly trials. You have a spiritual adversary who's going to come after each and every one of God's household and all of humanity with a vengeance to wreck them and to kill and destroy anybody that they can. It's already been here, but can you imagine the measure, measure that's going to be unleashed? We don't have time to mess around. If we're spending hours and hours a day, he said, what, what I see people doing is spending hours and hours with other people on the telephone, just trying to encourage them over and over on the same issues and topics. It's a sinking boat. It has a hole in it fundamentally that you cannot fix. You can try and plug it while you spend hours and hours on the phone with somebody trying to encourage them over and over and over again on the same topics. And yet you're bailing water in a sinking ship. And the only one that can do anything about that relationship that's sinking is that person getting straight and getting 
right with me. So what would behoove me is if you'll get out of the way and allow me to come through and preach the truth for people to step up into who their real identity is and get their focus on the king and the kingdom because we have a co-mission, which is a military mission. I do not think they know who Christ Jesus is, Janet. That's what he tells me. I do not think they know their commanding officer. I do not think they understand the warrior that Christ is because he's coming with a vengeance and he's not dealing with any insubordination in his ranks. If you're fundamentally a baby, he will not have you on the front line. You will not be defeating the enemy and defeating other people's foes in their lives, walking out signs, miracles, and wonders. They're not going to follow you because you're still in the baby infantile stages. He loves you. He wants all to mature. And the mature first fruits that he's going to have are going to walk out this lesson, teaching the rest in such a dark time. And he said, you're all going to jump to it. You're not going to have the time. We're running out of time. He said, tick, tick, tick. We're running out of time to get mature in Christ for what is coming. And folks, I don't, I don't think he's telling us this because we're, I think he's telling us this because it's a big, huge warning. He's never said to me, brace, brace, brace for impact. And he said it twice in a row today. I've noted with him when he says things in scripture multiple times, you ought to take note. I have no idea what's coming in the spring. I don't know if that means March or it means the end of May. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But I do know that he's warning me. Things are about to flip in a big scale way in this realm. And he's like, we still got people who are, 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 are expending their time and energy to bail out sinking ships when they need to look at someone dead in the eye and say, I love you too much to pet you in your sin. Repent for the kingdom of God is here and nigh and you need to get off milk and you need to grow up in the Lord right now. You have an adversary that's coming after you. Death is the last foe to be defeated and it's coming for my people now. Stand in the Lord, stand in the truth, proclaim it, fight the enemy, resist the devil inside of you, deal with it, subdue, throw down every wicked imagination that's in you, come into alignment, seek ye my face, turn from your wicked ways, humble yourselves, I will forgive the sin and the transgressions that you have against me, I'll come into alignment with you and will decimate the enemy, but if you're not going to do that, you're not going to be ready for what's coming. Gross darkness, a great falling away, great tribulatory processes. And he said this, he said, if my lessons and my shakings that I've done thus far in their lives has not been heeded and the lessons haven't been learned and the humility and the submission hasn't come in and they have kicked and fought against me or been blinded by self-righteousness and pride, then note that I am about to humble in a greater, deeper shaking. And folks, I'm talking about the 60 fold. He said, you want to know the difference between the 60 fold person and the 100 fold? He said, I'm not even talking about the 30 fold that's still struggling with doubt and unbelief and all of that. And we're going to, we're going to help them just like everybody else, Janet. My first fruits are here to serve me and my purposes. And they will put the fire back in those people by preaching the truth that will help them to stand up in Christ and declare and to move in their true identity. But he said the difference between the 60 fold person and the 100 is a 60 fold person has the revelation, has the understanding, has been gifted and given that, but they're not walking it out and they're blind to the fact that they're not walking it out in truth. Self-righteousness, he said, pride and self-righteousness is at an all time record high inside of his body right now. He said they're clueless and blind to it. He said pride is a very much a blind attribute. If you don't know what's going on, you're blind to it. Self-righteousness, you're blind to it. You can walk in your self-righteousness and think you're walking in Christ's righteousness and we're not if we're exalting the man. <laughs> this is something he's bringing forth. He's like, no, no, no. I'm looking out there abroad and I'm seeing people talking about truthful things, but the truthful things that exalt the man, not God. Is this still Peter? He's saying to me right now, is this still Peter savoring the things of men and not the things of the kingdom nor of God? I have a purpose. No one's going to stop me bringing in my will into this realm. I have set it up long before the foundations of this place even existed. No one will stop me from that. But what will happen is you'll stop yourself from being a partner with me in it. 
You will stop yourselves from being able to partake in participation with me in it because I'll find somebody else who will. Someone else who will get out of the way, really get humble, really seek the king, really exalt the king, talk about the king, talk about the kingdom, talk about the mission, sit at my feet, serve me. And they're not on man topics. They're not talking about man, what he can get in, what he can walk in, what attributes, what mantles, what giftings, what healings, what deliverance. It's not man focused. It's not petting man. It's exalting and praising the holy living God. He's had his fill, folks, and I'm not going to be coming through with fluffy bunny way messages. I'm not. Because what he is showing me quite literally, this passion that I have inside of me is because time is running out. I don't mean all of time. I mean the time period that we're in before it transitions into, quote unquote, what is next which is a, he said, it's a full plate right now. That's what he's saying to me. It means the enemy's coming with stuff. God's coming with stuff. It's going to be tossed around like a snow globe being shaken up. And we're not ready. I mean, by far and large, the body, the body of the church, the body of Christ is not ready. Because he just said, church means the separated and called out ones. And that's where I have a problem. They are not separated. They are not separating themselves from the carnal nature. They are not separating themselves from the attributes of the, of the enemy. They are making an excuse. They are walking in it for far too long. And it's, he's saying it again. It's just like Janet said. She doesn't have one day to waste to allow herself to come into union with the enemy for a one twenty four hour period. I'll tell you folks, what I've learned is that if the enemy comes in like a flood in that day, you better bet that I need to fight, whether I'm crying to the point that I cannot see straight and I am screaming in silence in this realm, but screaming out in the other realm in the amount of travail that I'm going through until we get the victory, until there is that, 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 that crossover, that victory between the angelic God, me coming against the enemy and winning that battle and coming into union with God and not giving up. I don't have time to do anything else. And if we're not doing that, and we're doing anything else, and we're swimming in woe is me for days. We are wasting time, and the enemy is making headway in your life. The enemy is taking ground, and he's taking land back in this war. We don't have time for that, not with what's coming. We cannot be messing around on baby issues, babying ourselves, babying one another. Christ did not walk around babying anybody. He said, get behind me, you brood of vipers. He said, Janet, they don't know who I am as a commander. They do not know who I am as a military commander, but they're about to find out. They are about to find out. He's, he's, he does not mince anything. He does not joke around about, about obedience in the family and the household of God, about knowing your place. He does not mess around about that. And he is the most loving being that you will ever meet, but he is not going to sit back and watch you snuggle with the enemy and be okay with that. Absolutely not. That's bondage. That's spiritual adultery. That is actually you get going to be getting pummeled and run over by the enemy. He has a problem with that. And he is looking for his John the Baptists right now. He has been calling them out. They know who they are. He's honing them. He himself is living himself and his will straight out of them, straight through them. And they are going to walk on the front lines and they're going to pull people from the fire. What did John do? He just said to me, what did John do? John went around talking about God and telling people to repent, period. That's it. Let me tell you about God. Let me tell you about the kingdom. And you need to repent right now. You need to turn from your wicked ways of estrangement from your God and come back into union with him and understand that there's a war going on for your soul and you're not going to make it any other way. And yet Christ had to go around saying, you brood of vipers, all these who had this revelatory knowledge of the scriptures and the truth, who went around reciting it, but never walked in it. He's coming to not only separate right now the wheat from the tares or the goat from the sheep, but he is separating the sheep from the sheep, the stock from the stock, and the best grains from the lesser. And it's not lesser in quality or in worth. It's union. Because every single one of us has been given the same opportunities. Every single one of us, he said, repeat that. Every single one of my children have been given the same opportunity to yoke up with me. It is I that does my works through the children. 
But folks, if we're going to sit around following things that have nothing to do with the king and the kingdom, like supernatural power, do you know that that technically doesn't have anything to do with the kingdom? It has to do with God and the way he created all that he created like himself in these different ways. But the enemy works in supernatural powers, miracles, signs, wonders. He does all that too. That has nothing to do with God specifically. That has to do with how God made creation. Are we following after that or are we following after the king? Are we sitting around talking about all that stuff or are we talking about the king? Are we entertaining demons while we're doing uh, casting out of, of, of de demonic entities? Are, are we just entertaining them? Are we having conversations and are we sitting down and interviewing them? Do we have a pen and paper out? Let me ask you your name. Let me ask you how, how you move. Why are you here? What have you? Or are we telling them go in the name of Jesus? Get out. I ain't messing. I ain't playing because if, we, if you if you even think that you're going to stay here and you're going to come against the authority of Christ, let me tell you what we're going to do to you personally. Folks, I don't I don't mess around with any of that stuff in the spirit realm. A, any time you spend with them is exaltation. Deal with them. Deal with them when they're in your life. Deal with them when they're in someone else's life. Lay down the law. Tell them what's going to happen if they're not going to move according to how the Lord through you is telling them to get out now. I like to hit them where that's going to hurt them. He just said, he's talking about me, but, but he's saying, I like to hit them where it's really going to hurt them personally. And that's what he and I walk in. Uh huh. I tell them, you don't think he knows you by name. You don't think he has spent all, all, all of his time in this realm ever knowing you operating in this realm from the beginning of the inception of who you are. You think he doesn't know? He knows exactly what to do to you personally to lock you up into torment now, to torment you before your time now, to just lock you down to say, I don't know, chain you to the walls of hell until the day of judgment. And then you'll be thrown into the lake of fire and you'll never be able to manifest to another human being again or ever play out anything to, up to enjoyment at all in this realm whatsoever. And you'll be known by your face in hell because you are defeated by a little child of God who knew their identity in Christ, who exalted the king, and he moved and he decreed a thing through you and there was nothing you could do about it. Do you know how much that bugs a, a demonic entity, God just said? Because their whole enjoyment is to be able to work their works hidden in this realm. But if you're going to sock it to them in that way, they're going to go down. They're going to be made a laughing stock. You're going to make an open show of them once again because this child knows how to move with their holy living God in the spirit realm. And we have a whole church of people right now who, he's just saying, they don't even know how to move in the spirit realm. Barely are they moving in the spirit realm whatsoever. We have no more time for this anymore. We need to start moving in the spirit realm. We need to start doing things with God in the spirit realm. We need to know our God. We need to be led of our God. We need to be able to hear our God's voice. We need to be able to listen to him. We need to be in obedience to him. We need to throw down every wicked imagination that sets itself against the knowledge of who God is, what his person is, what his, how, how he leads his people, what image you are made in. Walk in our true identity because otherwise we are babies who are not ready for what is coming. But this is what he said to me. Don't even be concerned about that because the babies who are not walking proper with me right now who have had plenty of time to do this. The shaking that's coming is for them because he said, I'm coming to shake the kingdom of hell. And if it's founded my people and they start to shake, it's the glory of God that will reveal these matters inside of them. And they'll have the opportunity to come into alignment with me. He's like, you're going to face, this is what he just said to me. They're going to face every one of these entities in some way, shape or form in their lives. And they're going to get the victory or they're going to get run over. That's, that's period. That's it. Fear, it's going to come at you. You're either going to get the victory over it or you're going to get it run over. Pride, doubt, unbelief, envy, jealousy, competition, bitterness. They're all coming for God's people. You're either going to get victory in your person over these entities now and get your focus off of you and get your focus on the king because that's how you're going to win your victories. Know your truth. Know your king. Walk in both. Find your being in him. Come into agreement with him so he can show up and show out of you and do great exploits in this realm, bringing all things as like it is in heaven into your earth as in heaven. So in earth is your earthen vessel operating the way that your spirit man operates with him on the other side.
because your spirit man knows what it needs to get your soul in alignment with, but you're the only one that can stand up in Christ and grow up and mature and fight these entities head on right now, these attributes that are coming at you in your personal life, because he keeps saying, brace, brace, brace for impact. So this is a warning coming through. And again, I've had my fill. I'm not going to sit around uh, spending hours and hours at a time. Um, I'm not, I'm not doing that to, to pet people in their woe is me stance when they're going to fight me and fight God on it. The truth is you're going to have to do something about that. And no one's going to be able to help you in any of that other than to tell you that. You're going to have to decide to come into the truth. You're going to have to get off your own topic. You're going to have to learn to exalt the king inside and the truth inside and battle the enemy and get gain the victory over the enemy now because what's coming in is just going to be accelerated and uh, a lot more of it in mass, gross, big mass. So... The, the love of God is to warn, to reveal the secrets to his prophets first. This is what he's doing. And he's telling me, warn them, brace, brace, brace for impact. Part of that is this message. That's what he just said. Part of that is a message like this. Get off the fluff topics. They're not helping you. Find somebody who's preaching the fire of God with the passion of the spirit of God, who is preaching about a commanding officer who is warning us of the war that is already here and on our doorstep right now to get up, stand up and grow up into the truth and get on the meat of the word because you can, you can, you have all the ability in Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And the whole point is he's trying to mature us. And if we don't mature in this realm and you make it somehow into the kingdom of God by the skin of your teeth, you will be required to mature and grow up in Christ on the other side. There's no skipping into eternity and all of a sudden you're at the level as everybody else. He said, furthermore, I got a problem with people thinking that now. I told you 30, 60 and 100 fold. That means there's all different levels of the people in my kingdom to think that everyone is equal in my kingdom with the status of maturity that they're at is ridiculous. We need to understand this. And he said, you'll know my mature ones because they're focused on me. They're talking about me. They're not focused on anything else. They are fighting the enemy and they're helping me to raise my children up to stand up in their true identity, to get mature and get in the fight. You know, we want to pray the Lord for the Lord of the harvest for more harvesters. And he's like, you're actually asking your father to help raise up and mature the babies into full maturehood, full stature of Christ. That's what you're asking me to do. I will do that. But they have to come into agreement with me and they have to fight for the truth in their very own lives. And they need to fight every day that they want to sit and think about themselves, how much you are doing, how much you're not doing, how much you wish you were doing, how much time you wasted, what's going on in your marriage, how's it falling apart, what do I need for finances? All of that will take you down. Focus on the king. Focus on exalting him. Ask him to bring in the answers for your per, si, per, personal situations that you're in because you believe that he works all things together for good and that if he's going to have you in this situation, it's for the good of you to face these things because, folks, he said, saying it once again, all these entities are coming for my children. Fear, doubt, unbelief, bitterness, pride, self-righteousness, anything that they can be tested in, it's coming. If it's already been here, learn from those lessons. Slay that entity now. Unite and yoke up with your father and the bridegroom because he does not take kindly to his bride cheating on him, nor does he even prefer to be around a bride, a woman of his who's going to sit around looking at herself in a mirror all day long. His bride doesn't do that. You want to know why? She's a perfect reflection of him. And he doesn't sit around looking at himself all day. He sits around looking at that in which he beholds as the treasure of his heart, which is us. So if we're going to sit around beholding what's the treasure of our hearts, it's going to be him if you're his bride. And he said, that's about it, Janet. That's about the message that I wanted to bring forth. So again, his point and topic is going to be brace, brace, brace. Impact is coming, folks. And the impact is both with messages like this. It's the fiery truth. It's get up, stand up. This is your encouragement. He said, many of them are going to be like, well, that's not very encouraging. He goes, this is your encouragement. 
This is your encouragement that I've come through with the truth. I'm giving you weapons of warfare. I'm giving you truth. I'm helping you in every way that I can. Stand up, yoke with me, unite with me. That is encouragement. That's answers. These are secrets of the kingdom being revealed. You got to get up and you got to walk in this stuff. No one else is going to be there for you when it comes down to push and shove in your life situation and you're alone and you only have God and you have the kingdom of angelic assets behind you. Learn how to work with them now. Learn how to exalt God now. Learn the truth. Be able to speak forth the truth in your life and declare the word of God in your life and stand firmly knowing in whom you have believed and yoked yourself to live the truth folks that is the encouragement because whatever is coming whatever he's warning that is coming is big folks and it's going to toss this place up he said like a snow globe being violently shaken that seems pretty turbulent so whatever turbulation we've been through already, whatever turbulent uh, life storms, whatever you've been going through in your physical, whatever your emotional status has been, whatever your psychological warfare has been, whatever the lies that you believed, wherever your woundings are in the past, whatever it is that you've already been through was supposed to hone you already into being a warrior. It was supposed to help you to get into the truth and to fight. Because why? He just said, why? Why? Because you gave us a sparring partner all along, God. Those were just sparring partners for what's coming. Sparring partners, that's training. You're just in training. Because what's coming forth is going to be more shaking, more turbulent, more than what we've ever faced before. So how about we start winning these battles at home with the, with the, with the, with the demonic entity situations and things that we've already been faced with and win some of those battles. Now I will repeat it again. He said, she'll repeat it again. I cannot afford to go one day without winning the war by the end of that night. I don't care if I don't sleep folks. I will go to bed facing God and I will be in right terms facing him eye to eye. I will go to bed that way. I don't care how difficult it is. Like I said, I don't care if I'm in that stage of great travail all day long and so many tears have been shed and cried and the warfare is on for my mind and for my emotions to get a grip, to get some kind of wall between me and God. Do not let that happen. Fight and win and go to bed and sleep and rest in the Lord. But fight with everything you've got because your soul's on the line your soul in this realm, and whether or not you're going to get success and win the battle. Christ already won every battle. He's, he's sitting there with his armor on, and he's waiting to fight with, with us, but we have to come into agreement with him to win these battles every single day. When the enemy comes in, and all you want to do is feel the anger or the sadness or the suicidal thoughts or whatever they're putting into us, Go to him, ask him, tell him this, even if, even if you can barely mean it, I want you to help me fight them and win right now. And if it takes everything you can say just to do that, he's not, he's not going to let you down and then continue to focus on him. Continue to focus on him. I've not won every battle like that in the past, folks. I haven't. Don't think that I am perfect in all my ways because I am not. That's Christ. I'm not Christ. But I do know that if I partner with him and I yoke to him, I'll win. Somehow, some way, he's going to get me there. And that's the difference between 60-fold and 100-fold right now. 30, 60, 100. How aligned are you? It's not about how much you know. It's not about how much has been revealed. How much have you been able to come into agreement with and become? You earned the right when you turned to him to face him on salvation, you earned the right to become. Become is an action of transition. You earned the right to become and be transitioned into a child of God by the power of God. That's what the scripture says. We have all of that to our access at our disposal, which is Christ himself. And he said, I see them sitting around as wishing that I was there to help them and I'm standing there completely suited up and I'm of no use because they won't come into agreement and believe it. He said, I couldn't do much in my hometown because they wouldn't believe. So where's his hometown inside of you? It's inside your soul. It's like he said earlier in Matthew 12, 25, a house divided, a kingdom divided inside is going to go into desolation and it can't stand. So we need to get our house straightened up. We need to get our household in order inside. We need to come into agreement because he keeps saying, brace, brace, brace for impact. 
And folks, I'd love you enough to bring forth this message. And again, I would not be expecting anything different from me in the future. And so I pray that you can understand that it is the love of God to bring forth these things in such a way as this, so that we will literally look at what we're doing and partnering with on a daily basis. Is what we're watching and what we're partaking in based on the King? Is it focused on the King? Because if we keep our focus on him single eyed, not one eye roaming on ourselves or what we can walk in or what powers and how beautiful we are. If we can keep our eye on him, how powerful he is, how beautiful he is, who he is, how he gave himself since before the foundations, how he then continued to do so because he loved us so much to actually walk it out in earth time and not do his own gig, not run his own thing, not think for himself, but he followed orders. He was very obedient in the army and the military and the household of God. And we have got to be as well. That is what we need to keep our focus on. So if we keep our focus on him, on his topics, on him, on the kingdom, then we will be exalting the kingdom and him. If not, folks, it doesn't even matter what else it is. It could be quote unquote, a good thing. And did you know that all good works can be burned up if it's not done out of love? Just likewise, the enemy can take your good works, your good subjects, your good things you want to talk about, you know, and turn you just enough to get you on an attitude. An attitude on a ship is you're heading in direction. He can get you just enough in attitude in another direction and keep you waylaid from what God is trying to do in your life. It's the love of God to warn us. And he's coming with a warning right now, folks.